Pardon me, ma'am. <laughs> Did I leave my boots under your bed? I, I don't get that. There's saying. a snake in my boot. Because you were fucking someone else's wife and you took your shoes off. Oh. Yeah. And I'm you not... had to make an escape on the run. You know, should I Twain, whose bed has yeah. boots been under? No. Sicky. I don't listen to country music. It's it's, that's not even country. Though. Yeah. Whatever. It's but no, that's just because you were fucking somebody's wife and um. had to make a, a hasty exit. That's why I keep my that's why I keep my shoes on. Mm-hmm. Oh, makes Classy sense. man. Yeah. I'm sure every girl hates you. <laughs> July Fourth, huh? I get it. It's Fuck. like it's like a to go order. <laughs> it was in fireworks. It was she, bruises. She, she tells everybody the shoes on. <laughs> not again. <laughs> But to be fair, sucks. the last lady. That the two, shoes? To be fair, the last two women I have fucked were both married. Oh, well, there you go. One See? of them was one, one of them was unintentional because she didn't tell me she was married. I didn't find out until the morning afterwards. The other one was Talia. Okay. Yeah, was so. that? All right, this is awkward. Let's talk about horror stories that are not Bobby's love life, um, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, good evening, and good night, Free Rotation Nation. Uh, this is your lovely host today, Chris, and I am here with Bobby. Fuck you. I'm here with Angela. Hello. And Miss Beckola. I like how we said good afternoon, good evening, and good night, but it's morning for right now for us. For, yeah, but you don't know when they're listening. Well, I thought I almost said, because Bobby said, fuck you, I was going to be like, fuck me. And I was like, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I, well, what I'm saying is you're allowed to listen whenever you want. <laughs> Absolutely you not. Oh, this is morning. not communist Russia. You yeah. can listen. This is a free country. You can we're, listen what you communism. want. We're not 1980s cable here. You get to pick the time. Yeah. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. One of us is making a terrible mistake. Or it was a ghost. Oh, shit. <laughs> like, I fucking hope so. Please usually wait. when we hear that... I'll... That's the stuff that happens in video games. Usually when we hear that, <laughs> there'll be voices on the audio in the podcast. That's hmm. sweet. If, I mean... Maybe it's my I know people don't listen that closely, but you can often hear a man talking like under us like... Well, tell him to fucking speak up. One time it was rude. Like, hello, hello. Yeah, if you want to be at the mic... I bet we're just picking up someone's cell phone. Probably. Saying hello? That's how I answer, but I don't know about you. <laughs> I meant like I say hola, bonsoir. This is Roberto. That's fucking good. That was a good one, Chris. Oh, shit. That was good, that was dude. Good. I'm going to start saying mushy, mushy. So mushy, I can mushy. say, no, Chris. I don't answer the podcast. No, Chris. I, I said answer the podcast with hello. <laughs> Fuck it. Just keep going. <laughs> this is done. Any hoosles. Uh, today, we are going to start our, we're doing a little series on creepy, spooky, scary stories. That we all find fascinating for one reason or another, and we're going to relay them to you guys, and maybe you've heard of them, maybe you haven't, and we're going to give our little spin on them, and we're going to start with Becky. Cause Me! Because you're her. the only POC in the podcast. It would be racist if we didn't. Is that how that works? I think so. I, I'm 25% Native American. Does that mean me a person of color? No, you're white as fuck. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but... Okay, Bre- Becky's the I'm darkest dead. person on the podcast. Let's I can go with tan that. pretty good. I'm mm-hmm. just going to... Okay, okay, I'm telling a story. Speaking of... Play- okay. Sorry. Anyway. So, a uh, little backstory. Uh, initially, when Chris had suggested this episode, I was like, I know which one I'm going to do. And then I kept thinking to myself, okay, what is the story that I'm so familiar with that I just keep forgetting about? So I told Angie, I was like, I'm going to do Elizabeth Bathory. And she kind of had this look on her face like, huh, okay, that's fine, whatever. Not what I thought you'd pick, yeah, but okay. I thought, so then yesterday we were talking and she was telling me what she was going to do as her story. And then I was like, oh, duh, hello, my favorite creepy place, which I tend to find places creepy. That's fair. Like, I find places creepier. I like where there's a story about things that have happened there. Even if it's not true, there's always a, a nugget of truth to it. So this place, I don't know if you have heard. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we can. If people can figure don't it out. Don't fucking look at me when you're asking this. This place is in Japan. Oh, this is easy. The Okihara National Forest. Okihara National Forest. It's like literally one of the creepiest places. Fucking weeb, and I love it. That's not a weeb. Is that the suicide forest. The yeah, suicide okay. forest. But the background of it is really creepy. Mm-hmm. So initially, like, are you okay? Yeah, that coffee was very coffee. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's like the one spot of coffee. Anyway, so if you don't know, Aoki Gahara is a forest that lays right outside Mount Fuji. It's like 13 and a half miles um, and surrounding it. And just to talk about the region itself, it is a forest that grew out of volcanic rock. So you don't have like what looks like a no- normal looking yeah. national forest. You have a very windy, rocky terrain with a lot of cave systems. And the trees have grown so close together that the wind doesn't even pass through the the trees itself. It's described as like one of the quietest places in the world just because of how everything had grown. Mm -hmm. To start with that, you then have the fact that the stories coming out of there is that, yes, it's the suicide forest, but there's a 
to get toward that, that's sort of like the tip of the iceberg of the story. If you if you want to talk about it, there's a lot of legend that's around it. So initially, there's Japanese mythology called what's called upasute, which is in old days what people would do to help assist in making sure their family would eat and they wouldn't go hungry. They mm. would take the infirmed and the elderly to these forests to die. I've read The Giver. Yeah, it's sort of that. It's sort of that kind of concept. Um, a lot of people have said that there's not a lot of evidence that that really ever happened, but it is in le- like fo- folkloric yeah. legend in Japan. So there's a, the stories of people who have di- basically just been left to die out there for hundreds of years. So that's that even precedes it's how it became famous to begin with. Mm-hmm. So then in 1960, what happens is there's a book written called The Sea of Trees. And it's basically a book about a woman who is heartbroken with losing her lover. So she goes to Aoki Gahara and commits suicide. Oof. And it sort of spurns this idea that Aoki Gahara is a place to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a book called The Suicide Manual. And it's or it's like the beginner's guide, or I think it should be called the Ender's Guide to Suicide Manual, to be honest with you. <laughs> but uh, you're not beginning shit if, you, if you're going to die. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's called the Suicide Manual. And in it, it says Aoki Gahara is the most perfect place to die. It's I think it's because it's quiet and it's peaceful. There's a it's a there's a high rate of suicide in Japan. Yeah, yeah. Um, historically, you know, you had honorable seppuku if you, you know, if something happened. Um, and people believe if you lose any sort of honor in your family or anything to that extent, uh, it's acceptable to commit suicide, which whatever. And by acceptable, she means the only option. Yeah. Like there's nothing else you can do. So people would go into the suicide for, or into Aoki Gahara and commit suicide. Mm-hmm. The number one way people die in the, in the forest is hanging. The second is drug overdose. So it, that sort of spurned this whole story for the last 70 years that, um, Aoki Gahara is sort of the place to die. Like to the point where there are signs outside of Aoki Gahara that basically say your life is worth it. There are people that love you. They have police that are monitor the area 24 seven. They have, they have grief counselors that mm-hmm. stay out in the area. But the problem is, I mean, they, the numbers are sort of skewed because they don't want people to know, yeah. but they estimate like a hundred people a year are pulled out of the forest ah. bodies that are found. Um, but what makes it, what makes this place scary to me is the fact that, just to put aside the suicide stuff, the forest is so dense and so hard to navigate that you, if you go off the path that's already cut, you can be lost to mm-hmm. the area. Um, there's stories of people who like, who are actually looking for these bodies who have to wrap like ribbon around the trees in <clears throat> order to find themselves back. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, it's a very dangerous place. And it's, it's kind of like America where, where they have a cavern system so people can go missing and you just will never find them. Yeah. Um, I think to me, what is spooky about, I mean, the suicide stuff is sad to me. That's what really is sad, but it's taught purportedly the most haunted forest in the world. Um, people talk about, they'll be walking and they see somebody in the distance and then they're gone. And then later they'll find a body there. Um, people talk about that. You can literally be 25 to 50 yards away from a body at any time. Uh, stories about people's stuff that people have been missing for 20 years and their stuff looks like it's pristinely found there. So the thing about it is it's like, I know it's a very famous place, but it's just the fact that it's, to me, what's scarier is that it's just a place that has become such a, a, a central focal point for hauntings. That's fair. Um, so I don't know. I've always been interested in going to visit it. Um, I just don't. I don't know. It's yeah. just so scary. I've always wanted to visit that place in that, that forest in Romania that's like supposed to be super spooky. Which is going to be my story. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Becky. <laughs> Angie, I'm sorry. Well, no. And the, the thing is, it's like a lot of people say it's a very pretty like hiking place, mm-hmm. like place to visit in general. I didn't know. I'm sorry. No, I'm saying it's awesome. Oh, Why okay. Why are you apologizing, weirdo? Yeah. I'm sorry. I think that's what scares me more, though. Like, <laughs> It's funny because forest and bush. Nice. I like that. But yeah. So I don't I don't know. I <laughs> Chris first was like, what? Oh. <laughs> don't look at me like that. That was his joke. But yeah, the Vi- there's a, a documentary on the Suicide Forest. It's really sad called uh it, it's basically on Vice and it's a talk it's a guy who literally his job is to go into the forest and find they're they're hoping to find the bo- find people before they kill themselves, yeah. but they'll find bodies. And I mean, Jake Paul. I was gonna say, if you think that oh, you don't just guy. walk in and find a body, Jake Paul. Yeah, like, literally three minutes in. A little garbage human being too. He is. Well, gar- he is. But 
To be fair, I think he got a bad rap for that. He walked in filming and got a body. Yeah. And it's all over YouTube. Did you, that person respect themselves enough not to die in a forest? Right. That's fair. Now, Sorry. There, there are a couple of YouTubers. I wish I remember what they were, their names were. And, you know, I, you always have to take stuff with a grain of salt. But they were filming in Aoki Gahar. They were camping in it. And literally, like, they were taught, like, their flashlights were going out. They were trying to get out. And to me, like, you can always tell when people are really faking it. It was like they were showing, like, it was dark, it was dark outside. And they were trying to get back out. And they were hearing stuff. And it was like a very, very faint second. But you see what looks to be somebody's body is there. You do, like hanging from a tree. Yeah. yeah. Like th just through the trees in a, in a V shape. Yeah. Nice. And it sounded like somebody was calling them towards them. Right. Yeah. That yeah. was that. One. Yes. They were they were hearing what sounded like that was somebody they knew saying something, but they weren't sure what it was. And yeah. then in the very distance, and you can see on the video what looks to be the shape of something hanging from a tree. And that those are reports that you get a lot are people calling to other people for them to find their bodies. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just it's sad, but it's also like almost scary. Oh, in, yeah. In a sec. Like I just because there's also reports of people who aren't feeling suicidal, who walk in the forest and suddenly think, you know what? Man, I, I just don't want to leave. Yeah. I, I may as well just end it. There's a lot of like there. There's a lot of Japanese folklore surrounding the fact that of Mount Fuji and probably because it's a volcanic yeah um mountain volcano whatever that word is but they all there's a lot of talk that that energy from mount fuji whatever is around it has that like i don't know spooky haunted energy to it like paranormal energy and you're right a lot of people there are people who walk in and it's just like suddenly they're like you know what it's a good day to end myself you know what maybe the um maybe it's like a portal or ley line because you know volcanic energy and such that's what we've talked about yeah. before is that it may be just on a ley line yeah. and it's just unfortunate that that's sort of a, a place where people have found to be a place to kill themselves. Yeah, ley line of the void. Oh my God. Oh jeez. Ha uh ha. -huh. Because mm. dead people. What? What are you thinking, Chris? I, honestly, I think it's more the pressures and responsibility of like Japanese life and the nonstop that mentality, especially they used to have. Yeah. When you would get somewhere peaceful and serene and you'd be like, oh, this is what it's supposed to be. I'd like to stay here forever. Fuck going back. Yeah. yeah. And I think that... Like, I get that aspect of it where it's your first break in 15, 20 years. Yeah. Because their lives were just nonstop work, 18, 19 hours a day. No, you have to be respectful. You have to be everything in the world, super polite all the time. You you can't be... You're living up to, like... Out loud right. at all, like... You have to live up to some standard that's impossible. Yeah. And then they would get to a place where they don't have to abide by any of those rules they right. can just be calm and relaxed i wouldn't want to leave either i, I kind of get it yeah i've t uh i've thought about it and it's like you get you're right it's like you live up to it have to live up to a standard that's impossible on top of the fact that just by doing something trivial you can bring dishonor to your family yeah. like th th that's but you a can never get back unless you die Absolutely. right like, but that's, that's unfortunate, but that's, that's historically a thing for samurai anyways. You, if you brought dishonor as a samurai, what would you do? You'd kill yourself. Yeah, I mean, they would seppuku or Harry carry, but that was even if they lost a battle. Like, right. if you lose a right. battle. Well, goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> Let's lose our best warriors because they lost a skirmish. Well, and if I, if you think about stuff like that, I think that even the if stress. you well, and I'm about to say, even if you don't believe in spirits, that would be exactly why spirits exist. Like the idea that you have that negative energy surrounding what's going on and not you're not dying because you're peacefully old and all that stuff. Like you're if you if you believe the whole Ubisute idea and then you believe in the suicide stuff, those are horrible reasons yep. to die. It's not it's not a peaceful way. To, I mean, it's a peaceful place, but in that peace is like horrific yeah. trauma. Well, yeah. it's, you're also I think they're also a lot of the decisions that are made for them every day, like their life, all that's beyond their control. Like, right. You're living in a society that has a hierarchy that has had it for 10,000 years. Yeah. And all these rules are so ingrained that you don't have any control over it. That's kind of the last thing you have control, control of. Right. And yeah. you get to pick a peaceful place. Like, yeah. So be it. Fuck it. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of people, you know, that in, you know, I kind of. I'm speaking from experience from when I was a kid in a group home. Like, if you see a sign that says, don't do it, people love you, that's sometimes just a damn lie. Yeah. So don't say shit like that to try and save somebody's life because all you're bringing home is, yeah, okay, that sign's a lie. I have nobody. I'm going to go do it now. I think it's more for the people who, like, 
who are still on the fence about it because you you hear stories about people who will take tents, they'll go camping, and they'll stay out there for a few days. They'll do the whole wrapping a ribbon about a tree mm -hmm. and kind of sit there and decide, is my life worth it or is it time for me to go? Like So I think that's what those are more so for. Now, there are people who just walk in and that's it. Now, listeners, if you're thinking about this, please call the suicide hotline. Yeah, 100%. And, and talk with someone yeah. because I assure you, you are worth, you know, sticking around, seeing was, how it turns out. Yeah, I was a depressed kid when I was younger, and my dad flat out told me, he's like, it's a permanent solution to a temporary problem. If, oh, yeah. If things get bad enough where you can't take it, fucking leave. Yeah. Right. Start over somewhere else. Yeah. There's yeah. always something else. Mm -hmm. You can I, reach yeah. out to any one of us, and we'll talk to you. I'm be a dick to you, but I'll still talk you down, and we'll go hang yeah. out and grab yeah. a beer or There's whatever. There's no solutions. It's not the only solution. Yeah, yeah. there are and lots of ways out. I just feel like you're. It, it's sad because this place is such a beautiful place. Like if you look at pictures of it, it really is a sea of trees. But, it, yeah, it looks like oh, an it's ocean amazing. wave. But you think like how the Japanese live? Like they're they're really on top of each other on the main yeah. islands. Like. There's just not that much room, so you find a nice, serene place that is stress-free. You just and don't want to leave. honestly, it gives you time to think. Yeah. I can't imagine being alone with my thoughts like that. Well, like, I also, like, well, like, on top. You don't like me enough for that. Well, think about, like, you already have, you're in a place like that where you may be thinking about it, but then at the same time, think about, like, you know the connotations of this place. Like, there's the everybody has described this place as having that energy it's just eerie it's like mm -hmm. you can be out in pure sunlight walking in and suddenly it's almost like it's darkness yeah. so imagine that on top of all of this other stuff and i can kind of get why people think it, i mean like i said if you don't believe in hauntings that's fine i do i think if you have these many people dying in this history of it as it is this this is a perfect mm -hmm. example of a place that's haunted well and back to bobby's point the metaphysical and just physical effects of um a volcanic energy and the earth energy coming up well look at like it, it does have an effect on well, you. well look at hawaii and like pele like people like yeah, they the gravitate those to those places because mm -hmm. of the way the earth is I just, to me, it does have an effect. I think I would think any sort of energy like mm -hmm. that. I've always been. Yeah, if you go there, don't commit suicide. Go look for the dragon that they have captured on video flying over. Yeah, it. they said that there's like historically like a mythical dragon that lives in Mount. Yeah, but it's impossible to get to because of the forest yeah. and all the right. stuff that surrounds it. But some people like on the road going up Fuji that looks out over the forest have seen him. Yeah, flying in the clouds. Go look for him. That's much better. Dragon daddy. <laughs> What's what scares me though are the is the cat like like here the cat cave systems. Oh, I they talk about cats. I was like, well, you love I'm like, cats. Uh, why are cats not scary? Not cats, yeah. but like this, like it's not the fact that you like thirteen and a half miles doesn't sound like a lot, but when you are in the middle, it does when you're fat. Well, like, <laughs> well, hundred yards sounds well, like a lot. Well, when you're in the middle of that entire like, <laughs> so mean. Like think about it at night where there's no light, everything is so dark, and like mm -hmm. there's cave yeah. systems. This is also a place where people just go missing. Mm -hmm. Like there's no no thank you yeah you they literally tell you after the suicide signs stay on the path because you may go missing. now to be fair I do want to go to the forest I do too I'm terrified of getting lost I get lost in my house <laughs> you're like I gotta go to the bathroom how did I get in the kitchen Becky I heard sure. that forest is a lot of curbs too <laughs> now that's true though because the roots are weirdly grown oh yeah like it's weird I don't know I Let's just go podcast trip I mean, to I'm Japan. on board. I'm yeah. down. I, I would, would love totally to, like... I, I have a great sense of direction and nothing in the woods scares me, so I'm on board. Like, it's, that's why I like Bigfoot hunting and all that shit, because none of it really bothers yeah. me. I I understand what nature is, and I, I'm okay with it, so mm -hmm. I don't freak out. I don't freak out at seeing dead bodies and death either. Yeah, no, that, it's, it's whatever. Natural. No, I see it. I see it fairly regularly, so it doesn't bother me. And you oh, see yeah. the worst of it. Yeah, so I'm like, well, that's sad. But am I going to leave the ribbon line trail? No. No. And the other <laughs> thing is... If you're calling my name from the left, no. no. That's the stuff that would scare me more, is the idea that, like, people hear their loved ones calling them. It's not like they just... I don't just... have loved ones. I'm kidding. <laughs> just... Wow. Dead loved ones, Becky? No, like, alive loved ones, too. Like, Well, yeah, except you wouldn't be in the forest by yourself. Let's hope not. I'd be like, don't leave the fucking ribbon, Although, Becky. Wouldn't that be crazy? Like you hear me like in the thing and I'm right behind you. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck that was. Yeah, I'm leaving. If Chris has wandered off to pee, he's just on his own. Now, Chris is going to whip it out and pee on the trail. I'm um, definitely wandering off the trail. <laughs> yeah. There's no way you can With get his that recorder trail. that I'll then listen to later and be like, rain shower? Yeah. Sprinklers? <laughs> Urine. If you think about it, though, if you really, really think about it, volcanoes are really just the Earth's bussy. Jesus Christ. It's like uh, a pimple, more. No, it's like about a period, it. yeah. 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 What is wrong with you? 
Listen, hey, it m- rages and then blows. <laughs> me, and a- <laughs> me and Angie are in the same wavelength today as normal. So <laughs> yeah. I just, yeah. yeah, that I I know a lot of people are like it's not that uh, sad, but yes, I, it is. It, Fuck it, off. Well, no, like people don't think it's spooky, but I think it's the underlying effects of why people do it, and then what the energy is left. Energy is neither created yeah. nor destroyed. Imagine that energy. Well, like you said, that one YouTube video with the campers. Yeah. If you watch that and you you can see that thing through the trees and it's just not there. Yeah. And they keep hearing it calling. It called for help. Well, and even, then it would say this way. What's even scarier is you see the video and then you see two eyeballs looking yeah. out in a ravine like exactly. right there too. And you're like. Yeah. And that that's the other theory is that there are Onis out there. Some of Ure. them. There's, oh, yeah, Ure. They're called Ure. Ure. Yeah. Like Yuri's? No. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. So Yuri's. And they, they lure you away. They're like. Yeah. Goat men, but spiritually. Oh, they just goat men, but hot. I was about to say, like, that whole, like, forest thing, like, there's that, like, spirited away. Yeah. There's this idea that there are spirits in the forest that will lead you away in Japanese folklore. And some are good, some are bad, some are just chaos. And what could be good for them is not good for you. Well, it's like Fae, too. Yeah. Kind of the similar Mm -hmm. idea. I want a Fae wife. They got to eat, too. Yeah. If I were chaotically evil or good, I'd probably go somewhere like that. Yeah. I would, too. Yeah. I've said before, like, this is bad. I shouldn't say this. I said, and I have never contemplated. I have not contemplated suicide, okay? But if I was to ever do it, that would be where I would do it. I get it why they say And the scary part is people find those manuals, the suicide manuals, in people's backpacks after they've died. Like, they're like, oh, let me just look this Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I get it because you would want to die somewhere peaceful like that. I don't I think I it's know. sad, like the they're CNN taking building pictures. on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just I, jump I was off. just thinking that. I wanted to be epic. Name. Yeah, but yeah, um, they they write their notes and put it around their neck, and they are apologizing for the people who have to find them. Yeah, the people who have to clean them, and that's just such a statement well, to also, why they were there doing it. Yeah, it's part of that culture where they're yeah. even sorry. I apologize. You have to find me. Yeah. I apologize. You have to take me down. It's just whatever. Ooh. Like, Ooh. not me. Yeah. I hope it's I get like, pulled apart by all... two trains on CNN <laughs> yeah. live so somebody has to clean it up and be like, what's up, bro? Hell no, that's mm-hmm. an awful way to go. Fuck well, that. Well, yeah, that was mine. Uh, it's spooky forest. Haunted forest. Spooky forest. So, I would just, don't think about killing yourself, but if you ever want to like read more about it, Vice has done a fantastic documentary. About the forest, not about killing yourself. Yeah, not about killing yourself. Um, and there are definitely, there's a ton of, Destination Truth has done one. Ghost Adventures has done one, I think. And uh, there's a ton of YouTube videos on people who have explored the forest. Um, and you really do get the sense, like, just watching it, how creepy it no, is. No, 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 I'm watching when I get home. Yeah, it's real creepy. Real creepy. Real creepy. Dude, hey, there's a lot of people who don't know about it, though, so yes. which is yeah, surprising. No, yeah. If you're feeling some type of way, we'll have it in the show notes, the suicide hotline number. Yep. Yeah, don't and you it. should definitely mm-hmm. call. Yeah, mm-hmm. Logic yeah. even has a song with it. Even if you it. think you could potentially be, just just call. Mm-hmm. It's free. Yeah, if you kill yourself, I'll come up and beat you up. Yeah. Or you can reach out to us. Again, I'll yeah. be a dick to you, but mm-hmm. I'll still talk to you. Yeah. 